Welcome back friends. In this video tutorial, we'll be talking about the size exclusion chromatography. And what we mean by size exclusion chromatography and why we use this kind of chromatography. First things first is that chromatography means, obviously it's a technique to separate a mixture of macromolecules from each other. For example, macromolecule means, let's say proteins are macromolecules, right? Mainly, uh, when you talk about chromatography, we, talk, we are talking about the separation of different varieties of proteins from each other, right? So let's say we have a mixture, we have a mix of proteins that contains, let's say, 50 different types of proteins. Among those 50 different types of proteins, there are certain, um, certain proteins we want to segregate or separate uh, from uh, the, that mixture. And what we use then, we use that technique chromatography to take that one out from rest of the other population of proteins. Now how we can do that? We can do that based on different properties of the protein. We can do the separation based on the size of the protein, based on the charge of the protein, based on the molecular weight of the protein. Now in size exclusion chromatography, we use size as a parameter to separate different proteins from each other. So what we begin with, let's say we have large proteins and as well as small proteins, two different mixture of proteins. Uh, the large one is denoted here with blue and smaller ones are denoted with red. So there is a mixture of this uh, blue and red proteins out there. Blue are larger, red are smaller. So now what we have in this case is simply a filter, just like a filter which contains pore in it. Now this filter that is generated, it, it's not actually a filter, but functions like a filter. It is made, it's a kind of column, it's called column. And this column is made by different polymer substances, multi-porous substances, which produces polymer which have certain pores in, in, in them inside them. So these are called multiporous substance made polymers and we have those polymer stack right and so we have large columns and in those columns we have this polymer mesh network added there right. Now there are small holes in between those network. Now what we do now we add the different variety of proteins we add smaller one and larger one there small black here in this case and large let's say red one in this case we add them we add the mixture of proteins to be separated in that column the functionality is very very simple is that there are pores and small holes generated by the monomers that are creating that polymer so in this time the smaller molecules the smaller proteins will enter into that pore right because those pore size are larger compared with that small, uh, smaller particles, smaller proteins. So small proteins will, uh, will enter those smaller pores. So as they enter in those smaller pores, they become kind of trapped because those pores are very tiny, very, very thinner. And that, that pore, I mean, those proteins need to travel this whole distance through that pore, through that channel. And that take a long time. While the larger one, while the larger proteins will not enter the pore because the pore size is smaller. So they can just simply move through the free space that are occupied, free space that are, that are formed between those beads uh, or polymers that we form. I mean polymers are in uh, form of beads. So easily the larger molecules, the larger proteins can pass through those blank areas formed between the beads. So what we can see, let's see here, these are the beads, the blue colored things are the beads and you see the beads are having pores. Now we know that pores are large enough for this red, a large protein to pass, but small pink protein can easily pass. So small pink protein will enter uh, into those pore created by the beads. So they will take long time, larger time to move from the top to the bottom, but the larger proteins will easily migrate. So that's what happens, large will not enter, so it will bypass the stage and come earlier, comes out earlier. On the other hand, the smaller protein will enter into that pore and take long time to pass, right? So that is called the size exclusion chromatography. Why? Because in this case, uh, the size of the protein is a parameter for excluding that protein to enter. In this case, if the size is smaller, then that protein will be trapped, take long time, so that protein will be elute later, will be eluted later. But on the other hand, the large protein size is big, uh, that, will be, that will not be trapped, it will easily travel comes out earlier. So if you look at the elution, elution means the release of those uh, proteins uh, from this 
bottom part i mean collection of those proteins after the chromatography is done uh, in that case we will find larger proteins come out first then the smaller proteins at last so see this is the time if we see the time and the flow in the chromatogram you see that red large proteins will come first then the pink proteins or small proteins so that is it size exclusion chromatography we use size to separate proteins from each other that's it guys i hope that this video helps you if you like this video please hit the like button subscribe to my channel to get more and more biology technique videos like this thank you